Welcome back to Fire Emblem Engage, where, yeah, this happened. Celestia, Gregory, and Madeline joined the group. But wait, it can't just be all of them, right? The weather's so beautiful today. That bright blue sky feels like a good omen. I could not agree more. What was a thousand years for them is only a few hours for us. Huh? Nell, Rafal, I didn't expect to see you so soon. It has been some time, Divine One. For me, it has been a thousand years. But Nell has returned, and we have come as promised. Yeah, how is that long, rehabilitating jail sentence for you? My sister and I are at your disposal. Welcome to you both. It really is a lovely morning. And with that, you know what time it is! It's time for five more and last bios. This world will find salvation. Before I go into Nell's more unique strengths, I have to cover some traits the DLC Dragon Twins both share. Firstly, they are, of course, Dragon Units, so get all the extra benefits from emblems that Alir and Vale do. But unlike Alir and Vale, they have access to five special Dragonstone weapons. You can see their stats on screen here. Nell and Rafal each start with one Fellstone and one other type of Dragonstone. But how do you get the others? By refining at the Forge, you can turn a Fellstone into... The Fell Ruin Stone. If you upgrade the Fell Slay Stone, it turns into the Fell Weight Stone. The Fell Ruin Stone seems to turn back into the regular Fell Stone, and the Fell Magic Stone turns into the Fell Slay Stone, while the Fell Weight Stone turns into the Fell Magic Stone. So, there's no way you can ever screw yourself out of not having any one of these. They're also considered special classes, so they have a level cap of 40, and they can only reclass to second tier regular classes after reaching level 21. Nell is a lance-wielding fell child with a nice balance of stats leaning a little towards speed. I've sometimes seen her described as a power crept Tamera, or less charitably, Tamera if she was actually good, and I can't really deny that. Her growths give good reclass potential, though that wastes her unique class assets. And her only starting proficiency is Lancers. This is a weird issue with the DLC characters, all of them only come with one proficiency. Which makes reclassing take some effort. Finally, all DLC characters start with 2000 base SP. With access to the right emblems, you can grab some pretty strong skills quite early. Nell's personal skill, Protective, incentivizes you to use both her and Rafal in the same army, which is much easier now that Rafal is not pathetic. I am awakened! Sombron's heir no more. Rafal now helps us fight against him, or the alternate version of him at least. Despite its name, his version of Felchild is different from Nell's, using axes and having different class growths. Stat-wise, Rafal focuses far more on offense and also tanking, having good bases in strength and defense, and great growth in those areas, both class and personal, along with a very good total HP growth. All that with a base speed of 16 and a growth of 40%, not bad for someone so strength and defense biased. Sure, his magic sucks, but were you really gonna use him in a mage class? His luck is also bad, fittingly, for what he went through. The crits aren't much of a threat to him due to his HP and defense, though his low resistance could be a problem. His personal skill gives him plus 10 crit every time an ally near him kills a foe, which is easy to do. And though that axe he used in the Xenolog isn't exclusive to him, it does work well with this skill due to its high crit rate and being fairly cheap and strong to forge. Nothing more to say about Rafal, he's just all-round good. Oh, by the way, this was the spoiler that I saw with the rankings. You can see why I reacted the way I did. For the Mage Dragon Tribe! Zelestia may be the best unit to come out of the DLC, and that's really saying something. 
she gets to keep her evil counterpart's personal Melusine class. Meaning, despite her personal growths being pretty good, and technically being decent for reclassing, it's a huge waste to move her out of this. It's basically Ivy, but trading staff utility for sheer power. Celestia has amazing balance based stats and growth rates in magic, strength, dexterity, defense, and resistance, while also having incredible speed. In addition to her personal skill boosting the hit rate of allies every time she defeats a foe, which should be often, though being a flyer she'll likely be very far away from allies most of the time, she also gets a class skill out of Melusine that nobody else gets, Soul Blade, which calculates damage from swords using the average of the target's defense and resistance. Now this can mean she does less damage to physical enemies with Leaven Swords, but it might be worth it because it makes Leaven Swords reliable offense even against enemy mages, and since enemy mages have low HP, and she's often going to be doubling them, this makes her an all-round monster offensively. Sure, she doesn't start with Tome proficiency for some reason, but again, why would you want to reclass her? Which leaves bad luck as her only real weakness. Celestia is incredible. Definitely use her extensively if you have the DLC. Out of my way, please! I don't like pain! Look at those base stats. Then realize you can have this guy as early as Chapter 7. Speaking of Chapter 7, I've often seen Gregory compared to Citrine, just even more extreme. His magic and resistance bases and growths are out of the stratosphere, but his dex and speed have far lower bases and some of the lowest personal growths in the game. They would be the lowest if it weren't for one of his four wins compatriots. But as you probably know by now, there are many ways to fix speed and engage, like Lin and Speed Plus Inheritance, and there are many ways to fix hit rate, like Engraving, Sigurd's Inheritance, and Divine Pulse. So really, these aren't as big of a problem for Gregory as you might think. His personal strength, HP, and defense growths are all also pretty solid for a magic user, so Mage Knight is also an option, as is Griffin Knight with Leaven Swords. And while he only has one starting proficiency, it's a blue one in Starves, letting him use Fortify and Entrap as a Sage. Really the biggest weakness I can see for Greg is a minus two speed cap, but the things you want magic users to fight generally don't have much speed anyway. Oh, and his personal skill I find kind of eh. You don't really want him surrounded by enemies. And Pandreo's personal is pretty much the same thing but better. Overall, Gregory is very min-maxed, but in the best possible way. How's this for praise? If you believe you must be big in order to be tough, then you should get to know her. She'll teach you other stuff. So remember how I used to say a lot of characters had the best personal non-DLC strength growth in the game? That's because of Madeline. Her personal strength and defense growths are the best in all of Engage at the cost of her dexterity and speed personal growths being the absolute worst. Her base stats are similar. Like Greg, she's very min-maxed. But she does everything a general is expected to do, just to the extreme! Virtually invincible to physical attacks, will die to a faint breeze of magic. Her personal skill encourages you to use her as a wall for your vulnerable allies. But as you can probably tell if you've played the Fel Log, being an Axe General with dexterity this bad means her accuracy seriously needs help if you want to use her. Like I said with Greg, there are definitely ways to fix accuracy and engage, but it will require some investment into engraves and skill inheritance. But her starting proficiency in axes, combined with her insane strength growth, means you could also go warrior for a true Ungabunga build. Her personal strength base is actually one point higher than Panette's, though she is five internal levels above Panette, so that's not really saying much. Her speed and dex are going to be very bad in this setup. But she'll still have a 100% HP growth and 65% defense. Letting her pull off the one-hit wonder Vantage Wrath build 
while having some physical bulk to fall back on in case something somehow survives. Though this build won't leave you room to run any hit plus skills, so you'll need to rely entirely on engraves. But if you want an alternative to Panette or Amber with this setup, she can do it. Madeline's not my favourite character of the DLC batch, but she has her uses. Also, for finishing the Fel Zinnerlog, we get a whole bunch of items, but most notable are the Mystic Satchel and the Mage Cannon. These let you promote somebody to a Mage Cannoneer or an Enchanter. Enchanters consume items and weapons to enhance themselves and their allies, and Mystic Satchel is required to change to this class. Item Surge consumes an item to grant special effects to allies based on the item consumed, like ignoring damage with a 30% chance, that's really annoying. Weapon Surge uses a weapon in your inventory to strengthen all weapons of the same name, ally and enemy alike for the entire battle. Honestly, it's kind of a shame that only, uh, I think only Fells Analog 2 and 3 do this, and 3 is so subtle about it that I didn't even notice it when I was recording. Mage Cannoneer. Of course, it's clan. Mage Cannoneers pelt foes with artillery shells from a long range, and Mage Cannon is required to change to this class. For Mage Cannoneers, attack power scales with dexterity, yes I've explained that before. Their hit rate increases with strength, build, and proximity to the target. The further you are away, the lower the hit rate. Let fly, ah, uh, you thankfully aren't as much of an idiot with this as the AI is, expands equipped shells to unleash a powerful artillery strike in an area. The attack lands after one turn. The danger radius, so yes we know that, we've already gone through two tutorials for that. But yeah, if you want to make somebody a Mage Cannoneer, I would recommend choosing somebody with very high dexterity. One other problem with the DLC reclasses is that while you can buy more items to change people to them, they are ridiculously overpriced in a game where money is very hard to come by. And here Define is Rafal in his casual clothing. Gregory in his workout gear. While I'm here I can show this, if you reminisce and go to movies, the final cutscene from the Fel Xenolog is available here. None of the other cutscenes from it are, but just the final one is. <laughs> That's the best subtitle ever. This brings back memories. Oh wow, I like the way her hair's done in her casual oh, outfit. Yeah, if you, wanted, if you ever wanted to see Zephyr slash Celestia in an actually practical looking outfit, here you go. Hmm. And here's Madeline on the lookout ridge, now free of discourse. Now I just need Nell. Is she shy around this version of Aaliyah? Here she is, finally! Good day to you. So, on that note, obviously these five characters all have support conversations. So if we go down to them in our menu, Rafal supports with, well I mean they all support with Aaliyah, but Rafal supports with Ivy, Morvia, Alfred, Gregory, and Nell. Nell supports with Tamera, Vale, Diamant, Zelestia, and Rafal, so it's not just with the other DLC characters. Madeline supports with Vale, Morvia, obviously, Zelestia, Gregory, and that's all, so she doesn't get any others. And you, yeah, the four wins really mostly just support with uh, Morvia, Vale, and the other wins. You with Rafal, though. And you with Nell. And yeah, it would be kind of nice if they had support to other people, but at least Nell and Rafal have support with uh, non-DLC characters. Here's the thing though regarding Nell and Nil. So, remember when I said a long time ago that I kind of headcanon Aaliyah as being aromantic and I don't really think romance makes sense for them? Nell is the one exception for me. I actually do kind of think they have good chemistry in the Fells Interlog, and her S support with Aaliyah is romantic. But there is a problem. Yeah. In Nell's world, the Aaliyah she was in love with was the biological child of Lumera and not related to Sombron, so it was not incest. Our Aaliyah is the child of Sombron. Apparently Sombron's DNA is different in different universes and so technically shipping Aaliyah with Nell or Rafal is not incest. Technically. 
It's just like, after Raya in Three Houses, I did not think the series could go any weirder with dragon pseudo incest, and it did somehow. But yeah, ignoring that element, I do actually, like, this is the one Aaliyah pairing I actually do ship. Speaking of DLC characters and supports, though, so remember when I said way earlier uh, that all the characters are grouped into support types, which affect the bonuses they give to other characters? Well, here's the thing. All five of the DLC characters got put in the generic placeholder support category, which means they give a bonus of plus 10 hit at every single rank, and that's it. This is also true of Morphia, but I don't think it's true of Veil. So this kind of feels like an after, a bit of an oversight. I wish they had maybe fixed that, but oh well, it is what it is. Here are the ally notebook descriptions for all of the DLC characters. They're all grouped in with others because there's no like world insignia for alternate Elios. I like Rafal's stamp though. Yeah, she's canonically 2,500 years old according to the data mine. The four wins, as you might expect, all have special boss dialogue for fighting their counterparts in the main story. I wish this was a little more elaborate though. Basically, this is just an event flag. The conversation triggers the first time you have that wind fight their hound counterpart, and that's it. Is that the me of this world? You have my face? I don't know what manner of illusion that is, but I dislike it. Away with you! Such incredible power. Is this world's version of me really the Divine Dragon's enemy? If she pledged to serve Sombron, then I said some naive things to the Divine Dragon. I didn't want to believe it, but here you are. The me of this world. What a shock. Aren't we just two peas in a pod? Is this some sort of Divine Dragon trick? If you're me, then you must relish pain. So I'll give you a taste of the finest pain as I kill you. What? Why would you think that? Come on, stop it! <sighs> Fine. I don't like the thought of hurting myself, but I don't seem to have a choice. Whoa, what the heck? You look like me! Bet I'll get a lot of praise for beating you. Inconceivable. In this world, I am fighting against the Divine Dragon? And so hungry for the approval of others. That's a recipe for disappointment, you know. Shut it, Bluey! You're just saying that because you're jealous of how tough I look. If I envy you for anything, it's that you get to be close to Mavir. Please, treasure the time you have by his side. I wish this was handled more like Constance and Edelgard in Fire Emblem Three Houses, where they actually got multiple different boss conversations for different encounters in the story. Let's just say I would have loved to have heard how the Four Winds, especially Zelestia, would have reacted to what Zephyr does in Chapter 21. Nell and Rafal also have special boss dialogue with Sombron in the final chapter, I did not expect to feel nostalgia in this moment, but your presence is exactly as I remember it. You seem familiar. I am the daughter of another Sombron in another world. If you know my face, then you merely recall a child who is dead. You and I are two fell dragons on opposing sides of a battle. Nothing more. And I mean to defend the Divine Dragon to my last breath. Prepare yourself! I have often wondered how it would feel to see my father's face again. Now I finally know. Surely you are not my child. No more of them remain. I am a fell dragon from another world. Our relation is theoretical at best. The Sombron of my world bade me commit terrible sins to become his successor. I brought that world to ruin. But perhaps I can redeem myself by kindling hope in this one. And when I defeat you, I will prove once and for all that I am greater than my father. 
And all of the DLC characters even have their own character endings. Rafal's is my personal favourite, as his arc was basically a reverse Harvey Dent. He started as a villain, and lived long enough to see himself die a hero. Today I'm going to try out one final aspect of the Tower of Trials I was never able to take on. Relay Trials. Now I've actually had a code set up so I can take on somebody else's Relay Trial, but hopefully this code works. Because it might be region locked or may have expired. So the way these work is the goal is to clear a map while taking turns with another player, like a relay race. Select new battle to spend a ticket, you get one ticket every time you go back to the Somnial, or I think it's like every 24 hours that pass in real time. Select take over to pick up where another player left off, this is what I'm going to try to do. You will get rewards if any player completes the battle. Select view results to see a replay of any trial you took part in, that's cool. So take over, it's time to boogie down. You can also, yeah... Random, take over a trial selected at random, enter ID, take over a specific ID. Once you have chosen, select fight. Okay, so, I'm going to try entering an ID here. Okay, it looks like it's working. So the reason I set this up is that somebody in my comments did have a trained uh, Nell and Rafal, so I might get to demo them a little bit. It would have taken me too long to build them up in skirmishes in the Fels in a log, let's just say. Survive for 10 turns, defeat Alira's defeated. Okay, so here's what happened in the first few turns. It's kind of funny to watch uh, them just go all the way over there like that. Okay, Diamant with Ike. That's kind of who I used in my first playthrough. Okay, we've got uh, Potencia with Lucina. That's interesting. And yeah, there is uh, Nell. <laughs> that was a pretty far away chain attack too. Nice shot there. Aaliyah with Krom, I wonder if they're a particularly combat bent Aaliyah, and we've got, okay, Rafal has Corrin, interesting. So okay, now we can see, nice crit there, you're down. <laughs> Once again, enemies with break staves are morons, enemies with smash weapons are morons, so we're getting yet more universal constants uh, here, though I think Rafal just missed with like an 80 something percent there. Uh, the Wolf Knight was unfortunately too tough for Hortensia to take out in a single round. So apparently you should have a strong enemy phase uh, to deal well with these. I'm not sure if I'll be able to actually win the Relay Trial, but we'll see. Okay, so the next turn here we had... Okay, got a lucky hit there with Diamant. I wonder if this Diamant's gonna have... Uh, s uh, gonna have accuracy issues as bad as my Diamant in my first file. It's kind of fun getting to react to somebody else's else's turns like this. You don't even get avoid bonuses from being in a in a forest tile and still that thing had no hit rate on you. Okay, yeah, this Aaliyah is pretty strong. Okay, you've got fog going. Okay, we have the summoning circles here. This might be where I come in. There 
and you decided to die to Rafal anyway. <laughs> I guess that guy's life's wish was just to get killed by a dragon, I suppose. Well, I mean, fabrications have limited lifespans anyway. This Hortensia actually seems pretty powerful. Well, she's not killing those things, but still. Uh, doubling even sword masters is pretty cool too, also massive, massive evasion. Uh, she's probably not going to do a great job of taking out uh, magic users though. Yeah, it is kind of nice we're getting to see Hortensia shown off here. She is a pretty good unit, and I would have used her if uh, Clan hadn't gone bonkers. Speaking of which, I think you all know who I am going to bring to this trial. Nice job of that fell ruin stone there, Nell. Fair warning, I don't have a lot of experience using Nell and Rafal. I won't stop marching onward. <laughs> Hi, Dimitri. So up to five allies can be deployed on an entryway. Activate dormant entryways by commanding an ally to wait on them. That's cool. Once an entryway is activated, any player can take over the battle. Uh, taking over the battle can use it to deploy. Activate as many as you can. Okay, yeah. Well, can't really use that because spoilers, but okay, unit selection. So, yeah, these are the ones that I have already in. Okay, yeah, this is a pretty good Aaliyah. Also kind of nice to see male Aaliyah here because I feel like apparently a lot of people mostly use female Aaliyah. Uh, yeah, Rafal is, uh, he's decently strong, but he's not like the best here. He's kind of meant to be more of a Corrin, uh, Corrin thing. Oh wow, 40 speed! Yeah, that's pretty impressive, though I don't like the fact that you just got L win, but I mean, I guess when you've got only a B in Tomes, that's pretty much the best you can do. Okay, so right, Diamond. oh, he still has Star Sphere equipped and Sword Power, so no accuracy buffs on Diamond, but he does have a plus one Collad Bolg, and some other boosted weapons. Yeah, he may end up having Dex issues for me, and here is Nell. Okay, so she's pretty decently strong and fast, and defensive. Also can't build, because why not? Yeah, I feel like I'm going to be getting a lot of mileage out of the Fell Ruin Stone here, but I specifically requested this person to use characters that I wouldn't be likely to bring, because obviously I'm bringing Clan. And you know, I should probably bring Jean as well, because I feel like not a lot of players use him. And as far as other people who are pretty unique to my playthrough, I think I should go for Lapis. Oh wait, actually... Ah, uh, the temptation to use my Unga Bunga Diamant is also pretty strong, especially since this is going to be a very enemy phase heavy map. Hmm, am I allowed to double up on Ike though? Maybe I am. Byleth. I'll take Byleth back on Jorn because this team doesn't have a Byleth user. Okay, I think we go. This will lock our units in place. Let's do this. So obviously Aaliyah has to not die. And let's have combat animations on all the time. Let us begin. So, how about we send you in with that Fell Ruin Stone? Oh, that's going to be doing a decent amount of damage to you, though. I might be able to Jorn snipe some of the worms, so let's go for this first. Lunar Brace is pretty nice on her, too. Also, yeah, Weapon Sync there. Weapon Sync for, like, special weapons, I believe, only applies while, uh... Oh right, yeah, she's still engaged, so I am getting Weapon Sync even though I'm using a special weapon when um, Dimitri's uh, Weapon Sync is Lancers. For the Divine Dragon. Okay, Clan may need the Avoid bonus. So let's try and wipe you out. I, I specifically told the person I'm taking over for not to like set the difficulty too high on the, on the trial. The I mostly dragon. wanted to do this just to show it off rather than to actually like, you know, challenge myself. Okay, let's finish you. I'm trying to see whether I end up doing a, a Sean uh, Goddess Dance here. We're not done yet. I think that's one of the things Krom says when he dual strikes. Uh, unfortunately, I can't have Amber attack something. How do I look? <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, yeah, Hortensia's uh, dialogue was pretty amazing. Hmm. I mean, I suppose this, this is really just to have her actually do something. So I believe with this setup, I actually do have two IQ I'm gauges ready. active. That is kind of cool that the um, Relay Trials essentially let you... Uh, I can't Ragnar with that, though, unfortunately. Have, they're essentially the only situation where you could potentially get two um, 
of the same emblem active on the one map. Not including, you know, the Fell versions and the Fell Xenolog, I suppose. So let's go for the Goddess Dance and get even more moves out of everybody here. Yeah, Aaliyah is super strong, but I have to balance, uh, you know, Aaliyah not dying with Aaliyah, um, using their super strength. I put uh, Jean's Bolganone plus 2 on Clan just because he might need this extra damage. Ah, oh, that would've been cool if that hit. Did you see that? But it would've robbed Clan of his thunder, and we don't want that. Just realized that means I also have two Corrins here. So, okay. Oh, I suppose, well, I mean both of these mages are gonna die to, um, to Hortensia anyway, they're weak enough. I don't know if I, I don't think I ever showed it off in the playthrough, but the funny thing about Hortensia is that her, um, one of her arena quotes is so long that oftentimes the arena will just move forward, um, uh, before the quote even finishes. I mean, I suppose I can see what I end up catching with Great Ether. Also, holy crap, how is Aaliyah's, um, how are Aaliyah, how is Aaliyah's avoid, okay, you've got avoid plus 20. Okay, and a few people have Star Spheres here, which is technically a wasted slot here, but okay. Oh, and I can rally too, because why not? Deploy me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever heard a Fire Emblem character specifically request being deployed. It's kind of a nice line. And you're still a little, um... You're still uh, avoiding getting yourself killed. But you are probably gonna get yourself killed, we'll see. It, probably. I've got like 80 attack power. But okay, yeah, Nell should be able to clean house here. So apparently there will be reinforcements eventually. Oh yeah, and I, and I do believe I have to win this in like a couple of turns, uh, otherwise the relay will switch to the next player. And then we won't really get to reap the rewards of this until I wait for somebody to come online. So yeah, that's probably why I was told to hurry this, but I I feel like I should be able to deal with this in a couple of turns. Apparently there will be reinforcements if I don't finish things off quickly. Because you're probably also dead. Oh, actually, maybe not. Her accuracy is kind of bad against you, but that's because of Covert. Come on, hit the second one. Thank you. And eerily silent on the victory screen, just like an emblem. Okay. Okay, well, I think I killed two things with this. I'm just a little worried about that. I might even be able to get somebody over there with Hortensia's Rescue, though. Wait, no, I already used Hortensia's Rescue, didn't I? Well, that's annoying. Okay, yeah, well, I definitely killed both of them. I'm just concerned about you right now. You, straggler all the way up there. Aha! Once again, Amber, no. Amber, yes. Nothing is impossible for Amber the Legendary Hero. Get no sympathy from Who you me. will get no sympathy from unless you're an alpaca. Okay, with that, I should be able to kill everything else here. Because okay, I've got I've got three range fail naught, so I can do this. I've never really heard of a. Oh, actually, wait, no. Lu, uh, Lucina on um, Hortensia does have the advantage of getting giving bonded shield to flyers, which I have seen use quite a lot. Uh. I mean, since Jean hasn't actually attacked anything yet, I might as well have him, uh, well, attack something. And I always had him snipe, uh, Corrupted Worms in the main game. Wow, you really like dual assisting, don't you? But yeah, I have actually seen, I, th I think I've seen Flyer Bondage Shield builds on Flyer Heavy teams, usually using a lot of Wyvern Lords, one of them often being, um, uh, what's his name, um, I can't believe I forgot his name, Kigetsu, yeah. Wyvern Kigetsu. Uh, what's my best accuracy on you? I guess it's the Fell Waitstone of all things, but I one-shot you with it, so no need to worry about the accuracy. So yeah, here's what Nil's dragon form looks like. He has a pawn in this like. Huh. Yeah, some people wish that it was, um, it looked more similar to his final boss form in the Fell's Zenalog, but, but still. And, uh, yeah, why not? Let's just end this with Clan. And engage for good measure. So yeah, overall, not exactly the most difficult showing of a Relay Trial, but it was really fun. And it did give me an opportunity to at least briefly show off Rafal and Nell, 
Not in these the other DLC characters, but I mean, you know, they're just normal classes apart from Celestia. But I'm, I feel like Celestia showed a pretty good, sh well, showing in the Fell's Interlog for me. And yep, that is over. Nell and Dimitri even though I wasn't really controlling her most of the time. Final results, uh, victory, two players hard, and we get some crystals. Which I believe also go to, um, go to my support partner for this. All participants get, uh, Sun Visor and Pretty Pebble, too. It's funny how those are the main things that I was, uh, looking for. Oh, yeah, so... Okay, what's actually really funny is that at the end of a relay trial, everybody gets, uh, like, ranked on how well they did in certain things, and there are some pretty funny, like, like awards here. There are some kind of negative awards, too, that you could potentially get. And you get rewards for these, too. So, most skills used, and... Okay, you got Bane Master for most effective hits. Sharpshooter for most ranged attacks. Cautious... Oh, least active, yeah. That's one of the negative awards you can get. A shame that I didn't get any of the positive awards, but, uh, yeah. I was just cleaning up the remaining trash in that one. Yeah, see, now I want to see what happens if I just randomly take over a trial. This is surprisingly fun. I guess I'm gonna- I'm gonna start a trial here. I'll try Desert Dunes. And I suppose first person to watch this video can enter the code and take it over. I normally don't like doing this because it severely dates the video for anyone who comes to it later. But, uh, hey, I guess at least one person is gonna be able to, if I give a co out a code in this, take over my trial. So, what do we got here? We've got... Okay, yeah, this... this map is very, very crowded. Enemies aren't really all that strong, though. Okay, there's an entryway, and there are more entries. Okay, so I probably want to hit as many of those as possible before I, uh, switch over. You know what, these are probably the exact four that I want to use. Unfortunately, you will be stuck with Maya Lear for this, and Maya Lear is not the best offensive powerhouse. And we have a 15 turn limit for this too. Let's hear it. And I accidentally equipped Veronica, but oh well. In fact, you know what? I am gonna summon somebody. Please be Edelgard, that would be amazing. I'm just doing this to break some terrain. Ah, that, that would have been amazing if that was Edelgard. But okay, right, so you're gonna smash this. Or apparently not! Okay, well that was kind of pointless. I can fight. There's a couple of meteors down there. The divine dragon looked right at me. Am I seriously gonna leave that on one HP? I'm at hundred percent. Okay, well, Lapis should be able to finish this off. Oh, they're only like one tile wide. Okay, but that is entirely its own thing, okay. Then Amber had demolished anyway, so it was a complete waste of that fabrication, but oh well, it might end up luring some attacks in, like that. Because just like wasting your turn to break obstacles, better you than us. Okay, the Meteors on Amber is potentially a problem. Of course, he does have Vantage Wrath going, so maybe I should have equipped the Killer Axe instead. Or, you know, you could just keep attacking. That's actually really good HP on that fabrication, though, honestly. Though maybe I probably should have used Great Ether, but we'll see. I can pivot around some of my mages to break through those generals. Yeah, and I may have to. So, okay. I wonder if I'll even get to that first uh, summon thing. Yeah, I'm not too experienced with relay trials, but they are they are actually surprisingly like I'm having a lot more fun here than I expected. Now, as long as I kill off the mages, I'm kind of confident putting Amber here. I fight for my friends. Kind of hope you'll end up getting an award for this. We'll see. Oh, and he's in quicksand. I believe there's only one quicksand map in the main story. 
Lapis is being pretty strong here, first. too. I mean, the enemies here aren't too tough, but, uh... Kinda surprised she's one rounding without taking any damage in return. Okay, well how about you basically throw yourself we away here, unless unless it crits. That's entirely possible, like you've got 15% crit, crit on this. Yes! <laughs> nice job, generic dud Griffin Knight! Though I, I don't see her surviving until the relay turnover happens. And I don't want to equip that because I learned from my mistakes, I am not going to end up getting broken on the enemy phase. Allow me. It is kind of interesting how they created all of these different like looking maps for like Solm and all of the other regions that aren't really seen in the main story, even though they are not nearly as well designed as the actual engage main maps. Okay, I hope Amber is fine. Yeah, you're a bit of a worry. Oh, there's an entrap there. My legend starts now. But yeah, this is exactly what I was hoping that Amber would do. Very much what I was hoping Amber would do. <laughs> Maybe those meteors are a blessing in disguise because somebody might take over my Amber with him uh, already uh, this much into Wrath. Whoa, okay! This is a good generic Griffin Knight, wow! Unfortunately, this might be her end. You served us very well, generic fabrication. Third coming of the dud and the best. Okay, now I probably do need to start getting a move on here. Let's finish you off, because you're a pain. But you serve your purpose of literally building Amber's Wrath. The Wrath of the Legendary Hero. I... Yeah, see, this is the thing. I haven't even used Great Ether yet. The problem is... Oh, that's also Meteor. There's a lot of Meteor on this map. Can I actually... Interesting. I wonder if I can snipe that Meteor with Lapis. I might be able to with Nord. There is an archer down there. Oh, I'm just out for fail Nord. Wait a minute, or am I just out for fail Nord? Combat Arts Raging Storm gives me another action which I can use to move in and kill the Meteor Sage. Everyone just wants to crit today, don't they? So, okay, right, that will give me another action. Okay, uh, hopefully, yeah, if I go here, I can fail north the Meteor, and then canter out of range of the... No so I, I love doing these mental gymnastics in my head for all the strategies, and then canter out of range of the bow, I think? Either that, or I can block you off with Amber. Or I can't, because, yeah. Because quicksand! Again, that mental that was a case of the mental gymnastics uh, working against me. Oh, but okay, Noble Rapier will finish you. Ready yourself. Again, everybody just wants to crit today. I'll change the future into hope. I don't know how many more turns I have though before the switchover. And I would really like at least that to be active before the switchover. And now we see the virtues of giving Mage Knight Clan a physical weapon. I'll go first. <laughs> I don't know if Amber will be able to... I want Amber to go where that thing used to be. Hmm. Oh, there's another... Yeah, I... Yep, that is indeed Meteor. I'm just going to equip that just in case the Spear Paladin decides to attack. Okay, so that's going to happen. But you barely do anything! Because my Lapis is apparently amazing. Okay. And it also dies to the counter thanks to me having a bow. Uh, but I thought you'd do that, yeah. And I thought you'd do that. Okay, is it turnover? Oh, it is turnover, okay. That's a shame I didn't get to the other spot. But uh, this is like my first time starting. Okay, Claude's is great. 
I could choose that for the memes. <laughs> okay, that works. That also works. <laughs> that one's also great. That too? Oh yeah, no, let's go with this. So, okay, we've got that. And if I do private, hopefully the code should appear on screen. So one of you lucky viewers is going to be able to take this over, but only one. So, like, okay, if you can't tell, this is my first time ever trying this mode, but I, I'm actually really pleasantly surprised. Like, honestly, as far as, like, multiplayer in Fire Emblem goes, this is pretty enjoyable. And I love all of the little, like, all of the different character-associated lines that you can send to the next player. They're all really characterful, the portraits work, like, the characters have different, like, uh, like, they fit different situations, like, Alcris being for, like, a bad situation, and then others are, like, cheering people on, or others are saying we might need to come up with a new strategy, it's, it's... This is surprisingly really good! I was going into this expecting to not like it, but... This is, like, uh, wow, this is the first multiplayer mode in a Fire Emblem game I've truly enjoyed. And that's great, because it means I'm ending this playthrough on a very high note. Of course, there are also OutRealm Trials. I, I guess I'll go over this briefly. So OutRealm Trials are very similar to, uh, is it Aether Raids? There's a mode in Fire Emblem Heroes that's similar to this. So this is not true PvP. But you can create your own custom map. Okay, so basically, you get to create half the map, and I presume the opponent creates the other half, and both of them are combined. Unit selection, here we go. Okay, so you get your general team of 12, so in this case, I can put in Louis and have my, my mostly non-spoilers team, but I will need to change over Jean to using Byleth. Oh, yes. I thought there could not be anything better than the snowman, and fortunately, I was wrong. I love how a pile of gold reduces a void. The enemy's probably really distracted by it. Yeah, you can even rotate these, too. Okay, I place all the terrain that I can. So if you select each ally, you can set an AI behavior for them, which is cool. Oh, and that's also cool. You can set them as specific groups. Yeah, enemy AIs actually work like this too, if you look on triangle attacks, uh, resources on all the maps. Pillory. <laughs> but yes, this is indeed an option. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, they don't want you doing that. Okay, there we go, that's saved. So if I upload this... Upload successful! Oh, that's cool. If your map comes under attack, you can um, select view results to replay. So, battle ID. Okay, then. If I do start battle... Random friend, choose a map from one of those uploaded. Enter ID. Enter... Okay, okay, so this means that if you enter the ID that you see on your screen right now, you can actually fight against the team that I used during this playthrough. Wow, is that just such a, an amazing thing to do for a YouTube series like this? I can't believe I didn't realize this until now. It is kind of a shame that, like, there isn't much of a multiplayer scene for Fire Emblem, because, like, that, that is also genuinely fun. So I'd, I'd love to get a community together of people who make uh, castles and fight each other. It would be really cool, honestly. But... That was the last part of the main gameplay that I wanted to show for Fire Emblem Engage, and so... With that, with a heavy heart, I have to say that this playthrough of Fire Emblem Engage is, uh, is over. Well, we got a Pat Somi one last time, of course. This has been a ride. Uh, yeah, it's not often that I do a full playthrough of a game the same year that it comes out, but I played this game so much that I honestly felt like I knew it enough to do a fully researched playthrough uh, after less than a year, and, um, I had a lot of fun with this. This is genuinely, like, this is, this is my game of the year. I know it's not a lot of people's, but, like, I just love Fire Emblem gameplay so much, and this brought back everything that I loved about Fire Emblem gameplay that was missing from some of the other modern games to me. And going through this playthrough, I've grown much more attached to the characters than I used to be. 
Like, the supports in Engage, I didn't think all that much of them on my first run, but they're not bad. They're not bad at all. There are a lot of really great ones, and uh, I'm glad that I decided to use Amber for the first time, and I ended up really liking him. I was afraid that Amber would just be like a one-note gimmick to me, and I mean, I mean, he kind of is, but like in the best possible way, if that makes sense. But the rest of the cast, I don't really think is that gimmicky, at least not as much as people accuse them of being. The emblem mechanic is really fun. I wouldn't really want it to return in the exact same way, because I feel like if it's characters from past Fire Emblems again, then it would probably feel a little bit stale. But like, maybe some kind of similar mechanic, like maybe have it be similar to Blades from Xenoblade 2, where um, there's a bunch of like in-universe legendary heroes that you can fuse with. I mean, you know, I wouldn't want it to be the exact same, but um, I do, I do think it's a good mechanic and I'd like to see similar things. One of the things that I cannot praise enough about Engage is um, the design of the first few maps. This game, gameplay-wise, has bar none the best early game in the entire series. It's so good for teaching you about the mechanics of the game, how to fight like flyers, how to fight enemy cavalry, how to deal with reinforcements, how to deal with side objectives and time pressure, even how to use warp, which not a lot of a lot of fire emblems actually tutorialize. Yeah, I would say this game's biggest problem is that it does start to fall off in the last act. Even around chapter 14, both the story and the gameplay get a little less interesting. I was thinking maybe, like, if there were more characters who joined past that point, maybe things would be a little bit more exciting moment to moment. But as it stands, this is definitely one of my... It's, it's obviously top three uh, Fire Emblem games to me. But, um, I just have to think about whether or not Radiant Dawn's still probably number one. Uh, this could be two, though. This could be two. I'm not even sure what, like, the third would be. And as the years go on, maybe this will be my number one. I'm sure this is going to be a game that I go back and replay a lot. I already just replay the first eight chapters even on Maddening for fun all the time. So... I hope you've all enjoyed, I hope the character bios have proved helpful, and as well as my discussions of the emblems. You've also taught me things about this game that I never knew either. Like for example, uh, I never considered using rewarp with Micaiah until it was pointed out in the comments. So yeah, in general the comments section has been some of the best I've had on this channel in a very long time, so that's another highlight of this. So all good things must come to an end. Say farewell to the Somnial and the Divine Dragon Alir, and I will see you all next time.